<clears throat> Hello, this is Manash Patel uh, from the EIA Capital Group. Today is November 7, 2010. This is our weekly Ichimoku analysis for the futures market where we cover commodities, metals, uh, f and different other thing, uh, cut futures out there. Um, <clears throat> normal procedure. Uh, this is our normal disclaimer. This is for educational use only. All charts are either in thinkorswim, tradestation, or freestockcharts.com. Okay, here are our contact details. Just to let you know, uh, EII Capital website is going through some changes right now. The new website will definitely be available with us uh, in about a week and a half, so please be patient. Uh, but we're going to have more resources and so forth available. Uh, the Ichimoku heat map will also be available at that time for various different instruments from stocks, commodities, and futures, and so forth. Um, you can follow us on Twitter at Ichimoku Trading, and also uh, you can follow us on Facebook now, Ichimoku Trading, too. Okay, so let's go straight to our heat map. We're gonna actually go through a lot of charts today, but I kind of quickly want to go for the heat map. Uh, remember the heat map: you have five to eight being bullish and negative five to negative eight being bearish. We give you two time frames weekly and daily, so you kind of want to trade with a trend. Okay, look at the wheat. Uh, the wheat right now it's a little weak on the daily, but the uh, weekly is on the borderline. Uh, story is still going on very strong. Corn is still going on strong. Sugar is still very it's extreme. Coffee is it's extreme. Oats is a little weak on a daily. Okay. Gold, as you guys probably know, uh, we get 1400 is just around the corner. We pretty much almost missed it by a point, I think, Friday. Uh, but that's bullish. Silver's being taken off like everything else. Look at platinum on a daily time frame. Finally started making a move. Uh, so that's good. So that's moving too. And then crude oil, you could remember crude oil last week. We were talking about that from the last two weeks. Watch out. Well, it's actually started making its move to the 89 level that we talked about. Um, and you could tell that the daily is moving and it looks like it's going to influence the weekly. Um, look at this. Natural gas finally moved from the extreme on a daily time frame. So we definitely got a lot of charts to look at. So let's go and look at some charts. Okay. So we're going to go through this very, very fast because we got a lot of stuff to look at. Uh, we're going to start from scrolling from the top, and we're just going to make our way down. Uh, let's go look at crude oil. Okay, remember the crude oil marks? 90.37 was a mark that we had that we're targeting for this thing to get. Okay, and if you look at here, remember we talked about this level here. If it broke 84.40, uh, this thing has a potential of going higher, and it does. Look at that. We're very, very close to our level now of 90.37. And it looks like we're going to get there very, very fast. And it has a potential of actually breaking that and going up to about, well, sorry, it has a potential of going up to that level up here and then potential of maybe going up higher um, because the weekly looks very, very nice. Everything looks good. Let's look at the daily time frame. You could see it broke its consolidation pattern. And you could tell from this move right here when it broke 83.88, it got here to the pivot. Look what it did. 84, it broke it and just kept on going and going and going. Okay. Now we do expect a little minor pullback to occur, uh, possibly to this new support level that was the last resistance. But if it's strong, it's not going to pull back that much and keep on going higher. Okay. So time will tell what's going to happen on this one. Okay. So that's the crude oil. Let's go look at cotton. Nothing to see about cotton. The thing's still going up. So uh, if you're in cotton, stay in it. If you're not in cotton, don't get in it because it's at an extreme. Okay. Look at here on the U.S. dollar index. Uh, if you look at it on a weekly time frame last week, it really did nothing. Remember, levels are here, okay? But we're kind of waiting for it to pull back to this level and see what happens. That's why we got all our alerts there. But if it breaks this level, it can go lower. But I doubt if it's going to do that. I think it's going to pull back some and then go. Uh, but we'll see what happens. Okay. Feeder cattle. Um, nothing going on with feeder cattle except confusion. Uh, we got our different uh, alerts set up there. Lean hogs. We talked about lean hogs. Basically, it broke in here, pulled back here, and then came to the bottom of the cloud. Now the question is, what's going to happen here? This thing right here is at the bottom of the cloud. Tinkins and Cajunson are entering the cloud, so you kind of expect some consolidation now to happen before this thing can start trending. Uh, but it does look very bearish uh, going forward. But we're expecting a pullback uh, before uh, the bearish trend can, uh, begins. If you look at copper, still moving forward on a weekly time frame, nothing discussed there. It hasn't even penetrated uh, the Tinkinson to go on a counter trend move. Heating oil was the one that we said that look, a trend's about to start occurring. Um, and we talked about that in the last video. Look what happened. It just broke the pivot here 
and looks like it's going to have a chance to keep on going higher and higher and higher. Uh, so if you look at it here, uh, we are expecting a minor pullback now, uh, but if it's strong, it's going to keep on going, but we do expect a pullback. Our target level is all the way up to here, so we do expect heating oil to take off to about 2.638. Uh, so it's just a matter of time when it's going to do that. If you look at coffee on a weekly time frame, this thing's still going on strong, no signs of weakness at all. Okay, uh, lumber. If you look at lumber, it basically gapped up into the cloud. Uh, really, is not telling us anything right now uh, because it's in the cloud. Uh, also, there's a lot of conflict of all the indicators, so we got to wait and see what happens as far as lumber is concerned on a weekly time frame. Uh, let's go to natural gas. This is the interesting one. Look at the weekly time frame. Finally, this thing, a week, two weeks ago, it closed above the, the Tinkinson. Last week, it went all the way down to Tinkinson and held its ground and closed above it. So that was a very, very good sign. So there, the bottom for natural gas may be in, so we now only time will tell. Okay, Daily still doesn't look that great because it's got this cloud here, uh, but there's a potential of it skyrocketing all the way up to about this level here of 4.35 very, very fast and very soon. Uh, so we got to wait and see, but uh, I think natural gas bottom is finally in. Um, it's interesting because it's just around winter too. Uh, frozen orange juice, if you look at it, remember we talked about this level here. OJ has to break that level up there, uh, a 4165.79 for the trend to keep on continuing. Okay. Uh, platinum, let's go look at platinum. Notice it basically last week broke the pivot high. Uh, the key thing is, will it keep on going up or will it sit there and pull back and reverse now? This could be a fake double top, uh, sorry, if a uh, fake double top where they ran everyone in and then pull it down. But I think if this thing's got a potential of keep on going higher uh, because the sh uh, Chacal here is here. Uh, I will definitely look for trades. Uh, if, if price goes above 1800 for platinum, I'll definitely look to get in for a long term trend on that guy. Um, Gasoline futures. If you look at gasoline futures, uh, it definitely has to break this level at 2.19. If it does, it's definitely going to sit there and go higher, uh, potentially all the way up to 240. So we got to wait and see on that. Sugar. If you look at sugar, it broke the pivot and it's still going up very strong. So there's nothing to really talk about that. Silver still going on very strong, but we're expecting a minor pullback now uh, due to the huge move it did last week. Same thing with gold. Uh, it's getting close to 1400 that's a major number uh, so it's gonna be interesting to see what happens but you could see that the momentum kind of died down a little and then uh, picked back up uh, if you look at corn corn still going on very very strong uh, and looks to continue uh, soybean oil is going on very strong all the commodity futures are pretty much going on very strong look at oats oats is still going on strong too so that pretty much sums up all that stuff Let's go look at the Treasury year 30 bonds. Right now, it's in the indecisive point because it's between the Tinkins and the Cadence. So 30-year Treasury bonds, are, these are the levels that are going to be key to see exactly what happens here. So those are the levels that we're going to put in uh, and put some alerts there to see exactly which way this thing's going to go. Okay. Uh, again, this is my name, uh, contact details. If you have any questions, please contact us through our website.